So I was browsing CodeShare about a week ago looking at all the cool projects that people in the Salesforce community have been building. And I noticed this one called SQL Force by Gregory Smith. So it looked pretty slick, so I went to install it. Um, this is actually the uh, Google Code Share project for it. And you can see he's got a number of packages here. He's got one called Java Force, which is the core library. There's one called SQL Force, which is what I'm using right here. And there's one called SQL Force for Jython, where you can script it with Jython, basically the same kind of functionality. And then he's got one called Copy Force, which allows you to copy a Salesforce org and dump all the records for the objects into a into SQL Server or Oracle or H2. Now, I haven't used this yet, but the description looks pretty cool. You can do deltas and all kinds of cool stuff just to make backups of your org. So the installation is actually pretty simple. So if I look at this uh, information right here, you can see that um, it gives you SQL-like language for Sokol. So you can do select, select distinct, select with union selects, you can do upserts, inserts, and deletes. And so I'll show you how I do all those. So the installation is really simple. You just basically download the jar put in your home directory and then you can run that so let me go ahead and get um, a command prompt here so here's my command prompt and you can see that I have the jar file I've got it in my home directory so there's the jar file and you can um, you can look at the help here so if I go uh, let's see Java jar. run that so you can do help and it has all the detailed information that you can need for help. Um, so you can do connect, delete, describe, echo, exit, select, and you can actually do help from more. So we'll do like, uh, let's do help connect. So look at the connection information. And to connect to an org, you can connect two ways. You can specify connect command with production or sandbox. You can pass it your username, password, and security code, and it'll connect that way. Or you can set up profile. This is what I like to do is set up profiles. So it gives you the structure of an INI file that you put in your directory with connection parameters. So I'll show you what that looks like here. So let's see. So here's what mine looks like. And you can have multiple profiles in here. So I've got one um, called Jeff at Jeff Douglas. That's my username. And it's production. Here's the actual username and the password and the security token and you can have sandbox instances also so it's pretty easy to set up and you can map these each, each one of your orgs alright so I'm gonna go ahead and connect here real quick here so I'll do connect oops, connect profile and let's connect in there I'll show you there's a couple things you can do here one of the things that's really neat is you can run a describe on an object. A lot of times you just want to know what the um, fields are in a custom object or a standard object. So you can run describe to do that. Um, and so I have to grab those out on a uh, on an alphabetically ordered list. So let's see, this is connect here in a second. It connects, I think, with the partner profile, by the way, or partner um, wisdom, by the way. So there we go, we connect to there. So let's see, I'll do something like, we're gonna do this custom object right here. And I can do describe on this one and get back all the fields there. So it gives me a back list of fields alphabetically. All right, so now I can write regular SQL and spit that out onto the console. So I can do select ID from, and that'll give me 10 records back from my account object. Now I can also put this into a into a text file. So I can do I'll put um, I'll put that. Let's try this again now. So now if I go back in Finder here, you'll see now I've got an accounts. There's my 10 accounts that I just output. It's an easy way to dump some stuff into a text file. It looks like it's probably tab delimited. All right, so now um, with the cool things else, you can insert records using SQL statements. 
So you can you can select from one custom object or standard object and insert it into another. So let's go ahead and first here and look at um, what I have in this object called cat1. So you can see I have a couple records in here. It's actually running, oh, I forgot to do. All right, you gotta append each one of your SQL statements with a semicolon. All right, so there's my records I have in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this category 1A record into my accounts table. So we'll do insert and we'll in the name field and we're going to select from where the name equals alright so it did that now so now if I go and check my account table we'll see if that records in there And there we go, there's that record right there. Okay, so now what the is also is you can also run update commands like you did in SQL 2. So I'm going to go ahead and see, uh, I'm going to say, uh, we're going to update and set the billing street and the billing postal codes. So let's see, make sure I got that. So we'll do first, we'll say, billing street. Make sure. All right, so there's nothing in there. Okay, so now we're going to say um, update account set where name equals. All right, so we're going to update the account. We're going to set the billing street equal to 111 Main Street, the billing postal code. I don't know if I can do this. Let's see. Yeah. Billing. Where? Oh. All right, so we're going to update the billing street the billing postal code for this record right here. Let's try one more time. All right, so I ran that update, so let's go look at this again. Oh. All right, so there is our updated postal code and billing. So now I want to go ahead, I want to delete this record out so you can delete some other two, which is really nice. So I can run, this is really popular, you can wipe out your entire word this way, so you have to be careful. You could do delete, delete from account, where name equals 1A. And the great thing about it is also when you, when you run this, it'll actually give you back some variables. So now when I delete this, <clears throat> it'll come back here and I can say, Echo. and see how many delete it. So now if I do well, I get nothing return there. So that is the uh, SQL Force project. Really cool stuff. You should definitely take a look at it and play around with it and give them some feedback.